The first step is to create a problem. The problem in this case is the increase in crime brought about in part by mass media programming of criminal behavior, making violence an acceptable means of problem solving, especially among young people. The second step is to create opposition to the problem. In other words, create anxiety and fear in the public so that people demand that something be done about it. The third step is to offer the solution to the problem that may entail a restriction of individual rights or some other predetermined goal, thus bringing about change that would have been impossible to impose on people without proper psychological conditioning. By causing emotional stress and mental confusion, judgment is impaired and suggestibility increased. Under these conditions, people allow their rights to be diminished without realizing its ramifications. The war on drugs is another example of this strategy in action. In 1936, a movie used hypnotic suggestion to give the audience instructions to do something. That movie was Reefer Madness. This movie used hypnotic techniques to both encourage marijuana use and promote anti-marijuana legislation. Speaking to a PTA meeting, high school principal, Dr. Carroll, commands parents, you and all the school parent groups about the country, and you must stand united on this and stamp out this frightful assassin of our youth. You can do it by bringing about compulsory education on the subject of narcotics in general, but red marijuana in particular. That is the purpose of this meeting, ladies and gentlemen, to lay the foundation for a nationwide campaign by you to demand by law such compulsory education. This is the end of side one. Turn over the tape for the continuation of Mind Control in America. Mind experiment. The white sheet of paper prominent in the middle of the screen is a distraction for the eyes to lock onto in order to cause the hypnotic state of mind while information is programmed to the audience verbally. Dr. Carroll delivers his lines with a hypnotic rhythm that is punctuated by changes in pacing, volume, and tone, just like a hypnotist. He speaks with authority and looks into the camera and into the eyes of the audience. Both are hypnotic techniques. Picture yourself in a movie theater. Now imagine a huge face on the screen staring at you. The stated intent of Reefer Madness was to stamp out the menace of marijuana because it leads to, quote, acts of shocking violence ending often in incurable insanity. End quote. In contrast, young people are shown having a good time smoking marijuana, dancing, kissing, and retreating to the bedroom. By showing young people having a good time smoking marijuana, Reef of Madness encouraged young people to at least try it. By telling the story of normal kids going berserk because of marijuana, Reef of Madness scared older people into demanding that something be done. This movie was part of a well-orchestrated propaganda campaign that included newspapers, magazines, and radio. In 1937, about a year after the release of the movie, the Marijuana Tax Act was signed into law, with a major effect being to drive prices up for marijuana to make its cultivation and distribution profitable. Bertrand Russell, philosopher, educator, and atheist, wrote in his book, The Impact of Science on Society, I think the subject which will be of most importance politically is mass psychology. Its importance has been enormously increased by the growth of modern methods of propaganda. Although this science will be diligently studied, it will be rigidly confined to the governing class. 
the populace will not be allowed to know how its convictions were generated. There could be no effective propaganda without mass media. Former national editor at the Washington Post and dean of the Graduate School of Journalism at the University of California at Berkeley, Ben Bedickian, reported in his book, The Media Monopoly, published in 1983, that 50 corporations controlled most of America's media. When the second edition of the book was published in 1988, that number shrank to 29. In the third edition, published in 1990, the number shrank further to 26. The consolidation of ownership of the press, publishing, radio, television, and film makes the coordination of propaganda possible. The primary means for controlling people is the absolute control of information. Men in power often withhold information for selfish ends. They often present false information as a diversion for the same reason. Words can inform or misinform what people think can be controlled by controlling information. Schools are institutions commanding trust, respect, and confidence. Picture a child studying in school, reading a book. The printed words are a distraction for the eyes to lock onto. The mind focuses on the content of the book. The information being read is being programmed to the reader's mind. The child has no reason to believe that a book would intentionally contain information that was false, and so accepts it as true, even if the child does not understand it. This is especially true in school, where there is pressure to accept what is presented as true, because that is expected and compliance determines both your grade marks and future. Repetition of the information constitutes mental programming. Thus, this information is accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. The college textbook, Introductory Psychology, second edition, by Jonathan L. Friedman, published by Addison Wesley Publishing Company, contains information that is false. This textbook, used for General Psychology Course 221 at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, Fall Semester, 1982, says the following about brainwashing. Some people who talk about brainwashing seem to believe that it involves extremely powerful methods that are almost irresistible. However, there is no evidence to suggest the existence of any such methods. In fact, the attempts at brainwashing we know about were not especially successful. This is contrary to numerous documented reports, both academic and governmental, particularly official findings regarding brainwashing of POWs in Korea. There could be no effective propaganda without education. In the early 1900s, there began a dramatic shift in emphasis in American education from intellectual development to socialization. The goals of education became political and social rather than academic. This was due in large part to John Dewey, who denied the existence of God and moral absolutes. As a result, the concept of right and wrong was removed from the schools, leading to a multitude of problems witnessed today. Professor Dewey based his educational reforms on the experimental psychology developed at Leipzig University by Wilhelm Wundt. Professor Wundt believed that man had no spirit. In his view, man was only a stimulus response animal. This kind of thinking led to the principles of conditioning developed by Ivan Pavlov and behavioral psychologists John Watson and B.F. Skinner. As a result, schools became indoctrination centers designed to bring about a new social order. Education of the young is used to condition them to what comes later, thereby eliminating the difference between propaganda and education. The mind is conditioned with vast amounts of information disguised as facts and 